Open Alpha One asks for a tutorial on NCurse's based shell scripts are awesome. So we're going to talk about that. So what is NCurses? It's short for New Curses, and it is a API, a library um, providing API for programming. And it's basically I've I've mentioned in the pat in the previous video. I didn't call it NCurses. I was referring to Dialog. NCurses is the library that Dialog uses. Dialog is an application that we can make GUI-like applications, dialogs, menus, that sort of thing, in our shell. So we're going to go over some of their basic commands uh, today. And uh, so let's just dive right into it. So the command is going to be dialog, which is installed on a lot of systems, not necessarily installed by default, but fairly common installed. If not, it should be in your repositories. Um, so let's go ahead and just make a simple message box. Let's give it a title. So dash dash title, and then in quotations, what you want to call it, I'll call it uh, my message. And then uh, we're going to say dash dash, it's a message box, that's the type of, of display that we're doing, and we're going to give it its message inside that box. I'll just say, hello world. And we have to give it a size, so I'm going to say uh, 5 by 20 to start up. So let's go ahead and hit enter, and there we go. We get a message box It says my message there, it says hello world, and it has an OK button that I can click with my mouse or hit enter on. And um, so... Let's just quickly look at that again. These last two numbers is the height and the width. So if I was to make this five and run it again, you can see it's not wide enough. So you have to make sure that you make your box wide enough for your text, which brings me to the next thing. I'll hit enter to get out of that. Control L to clear the screen. Bring this back to 20. Let's say I wanted uh, to have a long line of text. I can use backslash N as our new line character. And um, I move the world to the next line. Uh, but it's you're not able to see it here because uh, my box is only so many characters high, five. Um, but you can see right here it says that we're viewing 50% of the message. I can hit my down page and up page to scroll if I need to. But let's go ahead and run that again but make my height, height of my uh, box 10 and now I can see everything there, no problem. Uh, so there's that. So backslash n for new lines. Be sure you set the right height and width. If you don't set the right height, they, the user can scroll through using down page and up page if your message is extremely long. Um, let's move on to a new type of box. Let's do a yes or no box. Let's say you want to ask the user yes or no and you want to have a nice little dialog box. We can say dialog and again give it a title. I'll just say again um, my question, question, there we go. And we'll say it's a dash dash yes, no box. And we're gonna say, are you sure? And I'll go with five and 20 here. And I'll hit enter and it says, are you sure? And I have yes, no, that I can go back and forth with my arrow keys, tab, or use my mouse to click. I can click yes or I can click no, and you don't see any output, but the program exits with a particular error code, uh, standard error or standard uh, uh, exit eh, exit code or escape code. Oh, so people are giving me a hard time that I'm gonna get that wrong. It's either exit code or escape code, one of the two. Um, I think it's exit, yeah. Yeah, comment below. People are gonna give me a hard time about that. I'm just having a, a brain fart on that. But how do you check? whether they picked yes or no. Well, when you run a command, and I went over this in a previous video with the, our uh, Zenity videos, I click yes here. You can use the dollar sign or question mark dollar sign to get the exit code or escape code of the last command. So what I can do here is I can say echo or, and really in a script, you would check the value of this with an if or then statement. And uh, but here I'll hit echo question mark. Zero indicates that the user chose one. If I run it again and I choose no and I say echo dollar sign question mark, it's gonna give me an X code of one. So zero is yes, one is no. So basically as soon as, right after you have this, um, this dialog box pop up, 
you can either save this to a variable in your script or check it immediately and based on whether it's one or zero, do something accordingly. Next, we're gonna create an info box. An info box, so dialog, let's clear the screen here, dialog dash dash info box. And we'll say this is the info. And uh, again, we'll give it a size. I'll say 10, 25, whatever. Oh, it's because I used an exclamation mark there. Let's go ahead and use single quotes just to keep things simple. I explained that in a previous video about how exclamation marks are special characters. So there we go, we have an info box. So how is this different than just a regular message box? Uh, we can still give it a title, so I can say dash dash title whoops, dash dash title, my title. So it still has a title, what's the difference? There's no okay button. As you can see, we're back at our prompt already. So basically it displays that message and then continues on to the next command. It doesn't wait for a user input. Uh, so well, this is kind of useful if you want to display a message for a certain amount of time. So I can say, uh, this is the info, new line, please wait, dot, dot, dot. And then I can issue a new command of sleep for three seconds. So let's just clear the screen, look at this. So we have two commands here. We have our dialogue command, which goes up to here. And we have a new command for sleep. So we're gonna display the message. So it says, this is the info, please wait. And after three seconds, it continues. And if it was in a script, it would continue with the script here. It's our last command and it just goes back to our prompt. Um, so that's useful if you just want to display a message for a certain amount of time without any user input and then continue. Um, so next, let's look at oh, a text box. So let's say you want to display the text from a file. So uh, let me go ahead and I have some files here from other tutorials. My file.txt, which is just a list of numbers, names, and just a few columns here. Let's say we want to display that in a dialog. Let me go ahead and just say, uh, dialog dash dash text box and then the name of our file in this case my file.txt and the size I'll make it uh, 20 by 70 Let's just make it kind of big there and there we go we can display that text let's go ahead and just actually vim into that file uh, my file.txt and I'll just say, just to make it a little extra long, just to just demonstrate this, I can run the same command here. And as you can see, it lists all, and here we're look, only looking at 24%, oh, I thought I clicked exit, 24% of the file. So if I was to use my arrow keys, I can scroll through this. I can use my up and down page to scroll through it, jumping by page, and, um, I can also click these buttons with my mouse. And I can hit exit when I'm done. So that's one way you can display text. Maybe you want to display the license, like your code is GPL and you want to have a little dialog that displays the GPL code or other information. It's a great way to do it right there. Um, so there, there are other options with dialog. You can make menus. Actually, let, let's make a quick menu. Uh, let's go dialog dash dash menu. And then I can say, please pick, ah, pick one. And then I can give it some information here. Uh, the size of the, that I want. So I'll say 10 by 30. And then I'm gonna say that there's gonna be three options. And we'll say one in, we'll say blue, two is green, three is pink. If I typed everything properly, we have a box that we can choose from. So if you wanted to get user input, but make it something specific, so you don't want to have the user type something because they might type something in, incorrect. Uh, this forces them to pick one of these options, and if I hit enter, it goes ahead. And here you can see it looks funny right there, but 
the output was the number that we chose, uh, which actually brings me, I forgot to show you input boxes, which I wanted to show you before the menu boxes. So I'm gonna say dialog, let's clear the screen again, dash dash input box. And I can say, please enter your name. And then I'll say this is five by 40. And then I'll just hit enter here and I can type in Chris, oops, Chris. If I could type my name, Chris, enter. And you can see it outputted Chris right there, uh, which isn't very useful right there, but you can redirect it into a file or put the output into a variable. For example, well, I could just go like this, let's clear the screen, and put this into a file uh, called name. So now, that's not right. Let's do to name. Okay, so now I can say Chris, enter, and I can cat out the file name, and it says Chris inside that file. We can vim into it as well. So uh, the reason we had to put the two there was because it's seeing all of this as text and it was taking that standard output and putting it into the file. Here it's saying, don't, don't put this into the file, just put the, the exit code into the file or the, the output of the, the, the final output. Uh, so here, let me just explain the command again because I don't feel like I did a good job the first time. Running the command dialog, we're saying that we're creating an input box. We have a message. We can also give it a title too, which we didn't do here. The size, five in height, 40 in width, and then two greater than symbol, or you can do two greater than symbols if you want to append to a file. Um, and there's no spaces in there. And what that will do is that will take the output here and put it into uh, a file. So you can take that and store the user's uh, input into a file. Um, and the same goes, if we go back to our example here, where they pick a color, one, two, or three, it gave me the output of three here, and you can put that into a file or check it, check the output there, and based on whether they chose one, two, or three, uh, you can do something from there in your script. Anyway, uh, there's a few other things it can do, we're not going to go over but I thought you might find uh, these, these useful. You may have wondered how to do this. This is great uh, because um, not everyone has a GUI interface. If you want to write a script with semi-GUI, uh, a GUI-like interface, this is great for if you're just SSH'd in and you're not doing any exporting, which is, tends to be overkill. You can still have nice dialogue boxes within your shell script. Um, I do thank you for watching. I hope that you did enjoy this video, and as always, I hope that you have a great day. If you did enjoy this video, think about becoming a, a supporter over at Patreon.com. Uh, there's a link in the description, patreon.com forward slash millx1000. There you can become a supporter uh, and get videos early and videos for download, and uh, even a dollar a month helps me out greatly. So if you appreciate my videos, you can show your appreciation with a little bit of money, whatever you can spare. I do appreciate any appreciation you can show me financially. If you can't support me financially, uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Those help out a lot. Let me know what you think in the comments. Are you enjoying these videos? As always, I hope that you have a great day.